Hi there, I'm Machine Dana. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. I hope you're having a good day. Today, we're going to be going through a video about how you make videos. Yeah, before you click off, okay, this is, it's not just videos about videos. Twitch streaming, YouTube gaming streaming, Facebook gaming streaming, using video explainers to talk about key reoccurring themes on your stream. So video explainers, if you don't know, are snippets of information, a link that you can click on and it pops up a small video explaining key elements of your stream or it might just be an advert for your stream or a promo or something like that. You can set these up on your stream deck. You can set these up on Streamlabs OBS as a stream or OBS Studio or XSplit or whatever it is that you use. And of course, you can have them stored as commands, even stored as timers, so that that information can be called upon, called upon by your wonderful, wonderful chat, especially new people, when new people are joining the stream and they want to ask about a certain part of your stream. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. We're just going to go through what the video explainers entail and how to make the best of them, what the benefits of them are, why you should do video explainers on your stream. If you do find this useful, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions at all, or you just want to check out my stream, feel free to at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. I'm literally doing a video explainer about how to do video explainers right now. I don't know if this is, we're, in, we're definitely in Inception right now. <laughs> okay, so if you're a Streamlabs OBS user, there's a pretty high chance you're using Streamlabs online for your chat bots and your widgets and your modules and your overlays and whatever else it is that you put into your stream because there's so much you can do. Check out all the videos on my channel. You'll see loads of videos about all that kind of stuff. If you're using Streamlabs OBS, you're probably going to be using CloudBot. I'll just move my camera to this side here. Ooh, transition. Ooh. I would strongly recommend using something like Streamlabs Online and their CloudBot function for the commands and the timers. And honestly, the way you use commands and timers on your channel can make or break your channel. If you use it well, it can give off a really good impression. It can look professional. People get furnished with the information they need about you or about your channel or to interact with each other. It can really elevate the level of your stream and your chat. And honestly, this can sometimes make the difference between somebody staying around on your channel longer or not. So first you want to go to streamlabs.com. This is Streamlabs Online. You've got loads of different functions here. If you're not already using this, definitely check it out. You can log in using your YouTube gaming or your Twitch credentials or whatever. What you need to do is go to CloudBot and toggle on the CloudBot and forward slash mod Streamlabs in your chat. Now we're just going to talk about commands and timers for a second in context of video explainers. You really want to be having your video explainers, either manual video explainers where someone can call a command and it will re respond with a video explaining a key element about your stream or a timer a timer is something that will happen perpetually for example the interval period 32 minutes in this case or the line minimum 30 messages within the last i think it's five minutes the reasons why these are so good to use okay first of all if you're answering the same question three five ten maybe 20 times in a stream and that's not beyond the realms of possibility that can happen particularly more inexperienced streamers you're actually degrading your content you're not now in the game you're not having humor there's loads of stuff you're not doing when you're repeating the same answers to the same questions rather than using something like a video explainer. And all that really does is, first of all, it clutters up your mind, gets repetitive for the other viewers that have heard you say that many other times, but it also means that you've got less time to make the most of the time with the viewers. It also looks really, really professional when you do this. It shows that you've taken time out of your day to record a little segment, and we're not talking you know, hours and hours here. We could, we're talking 10 seconds. 30 seconds, 60 seconds clips here to record a video explainer, put it onto your channel as a command or a timer. People get impressed with that because not only do you have some text description about that, but then you've got a video that someone can click onto, immediately understand it. Put yourself in the psyche of the viewer here for a second. It will feel like to the viewer that you've made that video specifically for them because it's like a one-on-one -on -one discussion between you and those guys asking the question, but it doesn't disrupt the flow of your actual stream. I did actually recommend this a couple of times to a few different streamers also some mods and viewers that I have on my channel. And the responses that I got at the time were that it discourages people from staying on the stream and it can mean that they bounce away from the stream to click off onto a video. And obviously on mobile, you can only have one panel open at a time. If you're on desktop, you can have the window open and still have the stream there as well. But my response to that was the viewers got the option. If you're at least giving them the option to do that, many viewers will not click the link. They might just be happy with the description within the timer or the command, and that's fine. If you've got a video description, some people just prefer to absorb media as video rather than text. And in that case, you've given them that option. It's an optional thing that enhances the experience for certain users, those users that prefer 
that approach. And then, of course, if the video explainer is enticing enough, of course, you're basically selling your channel in that video explainer anyway. They can also choose to click on video explainers about certain aspects of your stream at quieter points in your stream. So those are the benefits, really, of using video explainers. I highly recommend them. I've been using them for quite a long time, and I know that people find them very professional and helpful. Not only that, but when I've been on other people's channels and they use these video explainers, it's, it's quite unique. Not that many people use video explainers. Explainers. First of all, you're going to need to record some sort of clip. Now, that could be a media file that you've just recorded separately. Another way to do this is to simply use the clips function. I would recommend keeping the video explainers to something like the 10 to 40 second mark. But of course, with clips, you've got a maximum of 60 seconds that you can work with. The whole purpose of a video explainer is that it quickly explains a certain aspect of your stream without you having to explain it again and again and again to multiple people. The purpose is definitely not to detract people from your live stream and they end up spending 5, 10, 20 minutes on one of your videos. It doesn't make a great deal of sense. So the emphasis here is definitely on keeping things short and sharp and quick and snappy and positive. So on my channel, for example, we do this thing called Twitch Rights. I've been doing this for about four or five months. I won't go into the detail of what it is because there is an actual video explainer of it here. But I've recorded this clip. I recorded it live on stream and I just simply said to my chat, all right, guys, for a second, I'm just going to be recording. So first you need a clip. Of course, then you can copy the URL. You can also copy to clipboard as well. This is the URL here. We then want to be setting this up as a timer or a command on the channel. You may not be using CloudBot and don't feel like you have to use CloudBot for this, but if you are using CloudBot, here's exactly how you would do it. Within the command section, you can simply add a command. We're going to call this like exclamation point Twitch writes test. We can paste in the clip. Of course, the clip alone isn't really very useful unless people actually click, click on it. A lot of people make this mistake when they're making video explainers or even just any sort of URL in a command. There's no harm in having a few words describing what that link actually is, whether it's a, a quote or whether it's a funny clip or something like that. Just some sort of quirk that tells the user what are you about to click on right now? It's really bad usability when you do that. We're going to go ahead and type forward slash me. What that will do is color the text that is responded in chat. The same color as the bot name. And then I'm going to give a, a useful description to this. Machine Dana explains what which rights is and you could put some humor in there as well if you want and then you've got the link okay so we've got we've called the text we've we've got a little bio of what that link is but nothing too heavy and then a hyperlink to the content we want the response to be in chat we want the permission to be everyone you can also give this an alias so an alternative way to trigger the command for example twitch rights in case people can't spell which monsters are spelling rights like that? I don't know, but I don't want to become a grammar police right now, okay? I'm not going to do it. And also, you can trigger it with a prefix. If you are adding a keyword in here, especially if it's a more generic one, one way to stop it from spamming is to have a global cooldown on this. So we've got this set up now, and our command is Twitch Rights Test. Now I'm going to go into my channel, and I'm going to type the command here. So now if someone comes onto the channel, and we're talking about Twitch Rights, or we're doing Twitch Rights, and somebody asks what the hell's going on here, just tell them to do Twitch Rights command or one of the other chat members to do the command for them. Or you could even have the command in your stream title. Press enter. They've got the clip there. Now, let's just break this down for a second. First of all, it's specifically addressing the command to me because it's me that's done the command. So this is a message to whoever does this command. So straight away, it's like the video is made for me, even though we know it's not. The text here, because we did forward slash me, is the same color as the bot text. I don't know why, but my named bot has not appeared here. That's a bug with Streamlabs. That sometimes happens. But you still have it in different colors. It's distinguishable. Somebody will see that more than the, the other text. And we've got the, the link here. It's pretty obvious what this is. And then we can simply click on that if I'm the viewer. Twitch rights. At least once a month, we try and do Twitch rights. And what that means is every single person in the chat has the opportunity to choose a word and we take it in turns. And that's the video explainer of Twitch rights. <laughs> now we'll just go into the same process with timers. With timers, you can add a timer, give it a name. We want the response to be something similar with the URL here. We again want to put forward slash me and then machine Dana explains Twitch rights to his viewers. Interval, we could have this just every so often on 30 minutes or something like that. And a line minimum, we want at least 25 messages or something. Now that will automatically and perpetually show in your chat. So we've now got a really solid video explainer file. We've got it as a command that someone can manually use. We've got it 
automatically coming into chat perpetually. So all of a sudden, now we look professional. We're saving our time. Uh, other people are getting involved in helping people out because they can tell them. So people feel like they're more of a community because they're able to help each other out. And somebody isn't having to wait for you to explain the same thing 10 times throughout the course of events. Remember, streaming often is about working smart rather than hard. Hard work is important, don't get me wrong, but working smart is just as important. It's worthwhile investing five minutes of your time to set this up than wasting three or four minutes every single time that you explain it. And remember, that time could be used to improve different aspects of your stream. You're buying yourself the time to improve your stream and your content. Okay, hopefully I'll give you some good ideas here for video explainers. Not many people use video explainers. I mean, they're really, really underutilized. I've probably seen these in maybe like one in every 40 channels that I've visited. Maybe maybe it's even fewer than that. So definitely try that out. It will make a big difference to your stream. I promise you, feel free to comment below in how best you think they should be used. Video explainers, times and commands. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Take care.